Everybody's ready? Okay. Uh, the most recent tracking data from the Bureau uh, tells us that uh, Cyclone Yahtzee is now on track to is now on track to uh, cross land uh, this evening be somewhere between Innisfail and Cardwell. Uh, the Bureau believes that uh, this location uh, is within a 30 kilometre uh, degree of accuracy. So uh, we are very close now to narrowing down where we are most likely to see this uh, tropical uh, cyclone cross the coast. Uh, the most recent uh, posting on the Bureau website I think uh, gives a very uh, good idea of what's actually happening up there and I couldn't do better than read it to you and I think it gives you a sense of just how serious this event is. So this is what you will find on the Bureau of Meteorology website this morning. Severe tropical cyclone Yahtzee is a large and very powerful tropical cyclone and poses an extremely serious threat to life and property within the warning area, especially between Cairns and Townsville. This impact is likely to be more life-threatening than any experienced during recent generations. By way of comparison, the last Category 5 uh, cyclone to cross the coast of Queensland was in 1918. So this is an event that we have no recent experience of. Uh, this also means that we will see very, very high seas and the Bureau has also issued a warning uh, for dangerous swells all the way down to the Sunshine Coast. So can I particularly stress, while we have so much of our emergency response focused in North Queensland and far North Queensland, we don't need people doing stupid things around surf uh, on places like Sunshine Coast beaches. These are dangerous swells. The Bureau has issued a warning and they are only going to get more dangerous in the next 24 hours all the way down the coast to the Sunshine Coast. The other uh, important message this morning is to say to those communities uh, to the west of uh, the area between Cairns and Townsville that they need to be equally prepared. Uh, the cyclone is uh, looking like it will be uh, around Georgetown as a Category 3 cyclone around 9am tomorrow morning. So as this cyclone moves uh, across the coast, it will uh, slow down a little, but it will still be a very serious cyclone, Category 3, in uh, towns like Georgetown, which normally you would never see a cyclone in. So uh, the Tablelands, the Hinterland, and then towns to the west need to start preparing and understanding that this event will affect them and give cyclonic conditions. Uh, the cyclone has now passed over the Bureau of Meteorology's uh, monitoring site station on Willis Island. Thankfully, there was a decision made yesterday to evacuate the four staff who, uh, who look after Willis Island. Uh, all of the measuring equipment and radar equipment has been taken out by the cyclone and we now have no measuring data from Willis Island. However, satellite images and others are still fine. Uh, Cairns and Townsville airports are now closed, although Mackay Airport uh, is continuing to operate, uh, although it may close sometime in the next 24 hours. We already have uh, some power outages around our air, uh, and we expect to see more in the coming hours. Uh, some some of the early winds from this uh, cyclone are starting to reach the coast and we have uh, some uh, reports out of air of winds strong enough to have taken a number of uh, large trees out already. So uh, the beginning of this cyclone's events has already started and some of the communities in this Cairns to Townsville stretch are starting to see the effects. Or that air, of course, is um, outside of Townsville. We now have uh, approximately 9,500 people uh, in, the evac in 20 evacuation centres between Cairns and Townsville. Uh, most of them in Cairns or Townsville, but uh, another large one in Innisfail. Uh, we are looking to... Uh, there is still some spare capacity in uh, some of these centres. And uh, I said this morning the window was still open and closing. Uh, it is still a little crack of light there and there is still some last-minute opportunities people should... Uh, who are in any of those areas that might experience flooding should be looking uh, at their absolutely last chance. The next time I'm doing uh, an update, uh, there will be no further opportunities for people to move. Uh, those people who are not in an inundation area, please do not go to the evacuation centres. You are safer in your own home and you will only take up space from people who cannot be in their own homes or the home of a friend. So please, only go to the evacuation centres if you are 
Firstly, in a flood or inundation area and you are not able to find accommodation with a friend or a family member. Finally, I was asked some questions this morning about the severity of the patients who were transferred overnight in the, uh, uh, the evacuation of Cairns Hospital. I can tell you that the, of the 250 patients, eight of them were adult ICU fully ventilated patients. There were 16 special care babies, two of whom were uh, intensive care unit babies. Uh, there were numerous other patients who were on stretchers and couldn't walk, uh, and many of them needed oxygen. The last plane from that evacuation will arrive at midday today. It's, an, uh, it's a Royal Flying Doctors Service plane, and it will be carrying four of those special care babies. So the evacuation will be complete in uh, about half an hour's time when four neonatal patients arrive here in Brisbane. Uh, otherwise, all of those other patients are now located in their hospitals. In many cases, wherever possible, Parents uh, were accompanying children who were relocated uh, and uh, efforts will be made by all of those receiving hospitals to stay in touch with families who have been left behind in Cairns about the welfare of uh, your loved one as they uh, settle into the new hospital. Uh, I might invite uh, Ian if you wanted to. Premier, thank you. Uh, my message and the only message I wish to give at this time is to those people who are still staying in the areas affected by storm tide. Uh, this morning at about 9 o'clock the Bureau put out another series of figures and to give you some idea of the importance of people evacuating from those areas, uh, the figures for Cardwell for the storm size, uh, sorry, the storm tide is approximately 6.5 to 7 metres above the highest um, normal tide. So that means a person who lives in that area who knows where the highest tide level is for that area, they can expect water above that um, through the storm surge of up to 20 feet, six and a half to seven metres above that normal highest tide. People need to understand that their lives and their property are in danger, but it is their lives that we are primarily focused on. They have a very small window of opportunity. They should leave now and go and um, find shelter with friends or family or if they're able to get to an evacuation uh, shelter or shelter uh, site, they should arrive there uh, in the next half hour to hour. Ian, how, how will that water arrive? Will it arrive as a wave? The, no, it will gradually build up for a number of hours bef as, as the uh, tide rises to 9 o'clock tonight and as the uh, cyclone arrives on the coast, it will be a gradual rise, but there is also a wave height above uh, that, that adds to that. Now, it's not going to be... Um, I'm not going to go into technicalities of it because, um, believe me, it is quite technical, but there are wave heights that will increase that, but generally that level is what people can expect at Cardwell. In, in, in Townsville, in Townsville, the height is around the three metre mark um, that we've been given this morning. Now, the local government... Um, uh, disaster management groups and the disaster, district disaster management groups um, are aware of those figures and have been advising people in those areas mandatorily to evacuate. And that's been happening. We now There is this very small window of opportunity which is left before it gets too dangerous to travel at all um, and common sense will play a big part in this but those people need to leave now. Can I just say, sorry, in terms of how long, how quickly... Ian's right, it will come up gradually, but over a period of three hours. So we're not talking 24 hours. It will go to its peak within a period of about three hours. So it will be quite rapidly moving water. Premier, how many people uh, what are in advice here? have you given your emergency services? At what point of the cyclone do they pull out and stop trying to help people? Emergency service workers will continue to answer calls and help people for as long as it is safe to do so. And that will depend on where they are, where the uh, call-out is to, how far they might have to travel and what uh, is prevailing in that part of town at that time. But it will reach a point in every single one of these centres where there will come a time when they simply will not be able to respond. Obviously, that will be different in Cairns than it is in Cardwell and they'll have to make a judgement on uh, what the call-out is and the degree of severity and the risk to themselves. But the clear advice to our emergency workers is we need them 
Not only today, we need them tomorrow and the weeks and months ahead, and we don't need them putting their own lives at serious risk. They obviously uh, take a degree of risk in all of their work, but uh, their, their, clear, their clear instruction is not to risk their lives unnecessarily. Now, what was the velocity of the wind on Willis Island, <coughs> the last measurement there, before the equipment obviously blew down? I'm sorry, uh, we don't have that information, but we can actually get it and we'll let you know at the next time. Is that alarming that the equipment did fail? Because that would indicate uh, a, a massive storm, which we know it is, but surely that equipment was capable of measuring Category 5 cyclones. So what are we facing now? Uh, what the, uh, the recent advice from the Bureau indicates that the wind gusts near the centre of the cyclone are now measured at 295 kilometres an hour. What's the time frame for when people won't be able to get SES assistance? As I said, it will differ in every place and it will be a case-by-case -case judgment. Obviously, if someone's outside the fire station and you can reach them, you'll do that, but you won't be travelling 30 kilometres uh, across town uh, when you've got uh, six metres of water. So uh, every case will be different, but people do need to prepare for the reality that if we get, once we get to uh, winds of 295 kilometres an hour, nobody will be moving anywhere. Premier, we've had residents tell us they're reluctant to go to evacuation centres because they're not allowed to take their pets. Will there be any relaxing of that rule? <laughs> Uh, I think it's important to understand here that uh, these evacuation centres are going to be very full. Many of them will not provide beds because it's simply not possible to do so. Uh, and they will, every single space will be used to preserve human life. Uh, I do understand just what a painful decision this is, but if you can imagine a centre that's not... Uh, some of these are school halls with a 1,000 people in them. Uh, it is just simply not possible uh, to accommodate uh, pets in those circumstances. And I... I, I I'd hate to be making that decision, and I understand how painful it is. But right now, we have to put human life absolutely first. From your, from your personal point of view, what catastrophe is facing the people up north? What is the worst thing, to your mind, that they have to go through? Uh, look, I think it's very hard to uh, even contemplate the unbearable uh, circumstances that many families are going to be facing tonight. Uh, we need to understand that they will be in very frightening circumstances. Uh, they will be, for the most part, going through... Uh, cyclonic winds of up to 300 kilometres an hour, torrential rain, uh, and many of them will do that without any electricity, without any mobile telecommunications, uh, and some of them may well be doing it with parts of their roof uh, coming off. As uh, Deputy Commissioner said this morning, people who are bunkered in their house are safer in their house, even if parts or all of the roof come off. I know it will be raining on them, but going out into those winds, even if... Uh, even if it seems sensible, is just the most dangerous thing to do. So uh, people do need to prepare themselves and particularly their children for something that will be quite frightening. Uh, but uh, everything that can be done is being done and the safest place uh, right now, given uh, it is not possible for most people now to leave town, the safest place is to be in their homes, in the smallest room in the house, whether that is your toilet, your bathroom, a laundry. Uh, the smallest part of your house, smallest room in your house, will be the most structurally sound, and that is where you should take your family when these winds really escalate. Where is, where is uh, I don't know that off by heart. Sorry, Chris. Uh, it, 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 I think it's about 300 kilometres, uh, but I'd, I'd have to come back to you on that. Given the size and the, the, the ferocity of this. Event. Are you confident you've got enough resources in place to go in after it's passed to, uh, to help people who are obviously going to die? Um, there'll never be enough resources that we can get in as quickly as we need to, but the reality is we have planned for as many as humanly possible to go in straight after this, the right types of resources, and that's critical. So uh, people with particular skills, the rapid assessment teams the aircraft that can do uh, photography of the area to give us a rapid assessment of the damage. Um, we have even just in the process now of making a, a request to the Australian Navy to bring their heavy lift supply shifts up off the coast so that we can use them as bases if necessary to uh, undertake our, our work from uh, in, in re, uh, reinstating services and providing support to the communities that are damaged. How would that work? How do they work from the, from the Navy ship? Well, it, it's just like uh, occurred when they had the tsunami off uh, Indonesia. The Navy ships park off the coast 
and we use those as the basis to actually uh, work from uh, with the helicopters and, and the accommodation that's available to us on those aircraft. Uh, that, that's those in craft. the event that there may be no place that can be used as headquarters or base. Uh, for example, Ergon's head office is in Townsville, uh, we, and there are contingencies being put in place, but uh, there may need to be um, another uh, venue put in place. So the critical, uh, the, the critical services that we will focus on day one and every day, every day beyond that obviously are electricity, telecommunications, water uh, and uh, obviously food supplies and medical services. So they are all uh, right now uh, in addition to responding, we have a team here that have been working for the last three days to ensure that everybody who can be on alert and ready to deploy are, uh, are on alert. So we've got people on standby, literally right across Queensland, ready to go in the minute it's safe to do so. What about hard to access? This is access? the stage where the army and the, or indeed the police are actually forcing people from their homes because they won't go. We've just heard reports that uh, some local councils uh, are still saying that people are remaining in their homes in low-lying areas. And the reality is that some people will decide, um, uh, in opposition to all the very, very best advice... Some people will say, no, I am not leaving. The problem that uh, police and emergency service workers have in that situation is how much time do they spend looking after one person as opposed to going down the street and dealing with the 30 other people who are prepared to leave and notify. So the issue is for us, it's about making a choice of priorities, about do you, do you try and look after that one person or do you try and uh, help the many who are prepared to comply? So you won't force them into um, that is obviously a very last resort, and with the huge numbers of persons that we are dealing with, um, I doubt whether that is occurring. What about hard-to-access places such as Palm Island? Have you had enough time to adequately evacuate them? Uh, we're not evacuating uh, people off Palm Island. Uh, the Palm Island Council has uh, worked to ensure that anyone in a low-lying area has been relocated to a house in a higher area. Uh, Palm Island is uh, a council that is ready for this event. It will be one of the, event, one of the islands that uh, experiences some very early uh, symptoms of the cyclone because it's just that bit offshore. Uh, without doubt, uh, this, because it's now south of where the cyclone is going to hit, uh, it's those areas to the south that will feel the brunt of some of the stronger winds and, the and particularly the storm surge. So uh, all the planning that can be done on Palm Island for that storm surge has been done. I'm very confident the council has done a good job in alerting people. It is a very small community and that does mean that you can just about talk to everybody. Premier, can you just elaborate the car? you think that airport will close today and what's the latest with all the ships? Mackay uh, Airport is still open and they will continue to make assessments. At the moment they can still safely, in their view, take flights in and out. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what, uh, when the winds get to a certain point uh, the airport will make a decision. But at this stage it's still open and flights are still anticipated there uh, for some time. Uh, in terms of ships, uh, all ships have uh, left the area and have been doing that over the past few days. So whether they're large coal ships or any other ship, uh, they've been uh, moving south uh, over the last uh, couple of days. So we don't uh, anticipate any, uh, any ships out there in these circumstances. They've been well warned and, uh, and they've made it their business to get as far away, far away as they can. Uh, I do. I don't have it right on me here. But, uh, look, it's roughly about half and half in Cairns and Townsville. I think there are about 500 people in the Innisfail uh, facility, uh, and I can get you some numbers on that. Premier, the Cairns Mayor says only two of the evacuation centres there are cyclone rated. How confident are you that the other ones will be safe for these people? Uh, the judgment that has to be made here, and that's why we're saying only those people who are in flood-prone, low-lying coastal areas should move to the evacuation centres, uh, is you are less safe uh, if, you are in the, um, if you're in the path of uh, a very significant storm surge. All the evidence from these events around the world tell us that people and their lives are at more risk from storm surge water than they are from cyclonic winds. That doesn't mean there's no risk from the winds. And yes, some of the people in evacuation centres may well face some very difficult circumstances in the centres. We are <coughs> indicating they should move to there because they're at less risk not no risk, less risk, than if they stayed in the path of the storm surge waters, which, as you've heard, in some places could be as high as six or seven metres. Clearly people have to be got out of that environment. Premier, is the ETA still 10 o'clock tonight? Uh, at this stage, yes, and we'll update you through the day. What happened to the cyclone bunkers promised after cyclone? 
Uh, what was, uh, in, what was uh, committed to after Cyclone Larry was that as we built large public infrastructure that lent itself to being uh, capable of taking a large number of people, that would be done at a Category 5 cyclone level. That has happened. Uh, in Innisfail State High School, the centre that is accommodating 500 people right now is a Category 5 uh, shelter and that was as a result of that rebuild. Red Lynch State School, which is also accommodating I think close to 1,000 people, uh, built and fi finished at the end of last year is a Category 5 shelter and is accommodating 1,000 people. Uh, the hall at the Babinda RSL is a Category 5 shelter. Uh, so that's three that have been done in five years. Uh, the commitment was as we build the things that are necessary, like school halls, where people could take shelter, we will build them to a Category 5 level. But that you can't accommodate 75,000 people in these sorts of shelters. That, that could never happen. Uh, you always need to expect that some people will be sheltering in their own homes. There's, there's been reports that some people are being turned away from evacuation centres because they are full. Is that correct? Some evacuation centres have reached capacity, but in both Cairns, Townsville and Innisfail, uh, there are still others that do have capacity. Uh, Earlville Shopping Centre in Cairns still has significant capacity. Um, if you can imagine spending the night in the shopping centre, it's not going to be very comfortable. Uh, it, it's, it's, but if you are in the path of a tidal surge, it is still a safer place to be. But if you can be in your own home, that is where you should stay. Thank 